Hello! Since I've been stuck on what kind of videos I want to make, I think it'd be a great start to answer some of your questions as it's something I haven't done in a while and I feel it would really help on me getting back on my feet. So let's begin! Baby Blue Know Who says, What do you think to the theory that Triceratops and other Ceratopsians may have been omnivores? This is a reference to my Triceratops video and I saw a, quite a few comments about Triceratops actually eating meat. I've tried looking at stuff on the internet. I haven't been able to find any evidence that Triceratops ate meat or ate other animals, but if we have evidence or if we find evidence that Triceratops ate other dinosaurs, in a way, it wouldn't surprise me because if we look at modern animals in Scotland, in the Highlands, uh, the deer there, the stags, will actually chew and eat the fallen antlers of the last mating season to gain nutrients and to regain calcium for the regrowth of their new antlers. And we also have recorded documentation of hippos eating meat. So because we have examples of modern animals that we consider plant eaters actually eating meat, I do think that some dinosaurs may have been similar to that. And so if Triceratops did eat bones and other animals, it wouldn't surprise me. But the, what I want to get out there is that the chances are Triceratops would never, ever kill something to eat. If Triceratops did eat other animals, the chances are it was being an opportunist and trying to gain something that it was lacking in its diet, whether that be calcium or protein, something like that. Maybe Triceratops would take advantage of that. But since I truly believe that Triceratops wouldn't have gone out there killing things, I think it's important to highlight that its primary diet would have been made up of plants. So when I said in my Triceratops fact file that it would have been my first plant-eating dinosaur that I would have made a video on, that I think is fine. So the potential that Triceratops and other Ceratopsians would have eaten other animals is still possible, but the idea of Ceratopsians actually killing animals to eat, I think, takes things too far. Toffee1617 says, Your videos are simply great. But I don't like how you say that the future animals from Primeval could come true. This is a reference to my Animals in the Future video and I was in desperate need of a haircut when I made that but never mind, it was just a mad video and I wanted to talk about the potential that some creatures in sci-fi shows could actually one day evolve. But I don't think I've ever said that there is an absolute definite chance that something on a science fiction show is going to evolve in the future. But there is definitely some science to the future predators, for example, in Primeval. I'll try and put an example of this in the description below, but in some shows, the producers don't just go insane and say, OK, we want to make a monster that looks like a fish that has legs, that has spider legs sticking out of its back. Sometimes they do actually try and use as much realistic science as possible to get an idea of what their monsters should look like. The idea of bats taking over the planet isn't that insane when you consider that 20% of all the species of mammals alive today are thought to be bats. And so if there was a major extinction event that would kill off all humans and a lot of animals, what would you expect to survive? The chances are the bats have a good go at it. And so, if they evolve, what will they turn into? And so, shows like Primeval do actually try and use a realistic amount of science, but of course they do bend that to try and add sensation to their shows. But there is definitely potential that some bat-like creatures could one day take over the planet. But I don't think I've said in any of my videos that it will definitely happen because you don't know what's going to happen in the future. And so for a TV show to be exactly right on what animals are going to take over the planet once humans have gone is going to be the most difficult thing you could really do. But that really is the fun part of something like paleontology because you can do guesswork in some areas. And this is an example, working out what animals are going to take over the planet. Prehistoric Blog says, cool collection, where did you get them all? I've bought most of my fossils on the internet 
and uh, there are shops available that you can go to as well but if you are going to buy fossils I do want to say don't go crazy because if I brought in a professional collector to have a look at what I've got I would imagine they would consider a lot of my fossils trash because none of my fossils are museum quality and that's because I don't want to prevent any scientific research I know I've said in a lot of videos that this fossil here there it is I, I've said in a lot of videos that that is a spinosaurus vertebra but it is pretty much impossible to be so sure on that and no one's really going to be that keen on researching this little bone and they, these kind of fragments are quite common so that isn't such a concern but as well as scientific research you may be familiar with the Tarbosaurus skeleton that was smuggled out of Mongolia and auctioned in America it made a lot of people angry because that fossil belonged to Mongolia there are laws in lots of countries that say that their fossils cannot be taken out of their country so that's important to remember so if you are going to buy fossils whether you go and do it on the internet or you go into a store do some research before you actually buy something because there are laws in some countries that own the fossils and also you may potentially be holding research on particular fossils I also made a video here it is on buying fossils online. I recommend checking that out as well. So, you know, buying fossils, you know, there are some awesome stuff that you can get that are quite common and won't have any problems when it comes down to these issues. But there are some examples that can make people angry. So be careful if you are going to buy fossils and don't go crazy. And also, buying replicas is a very good alternative when you want to do something with dinosaurs and prehistoric life. My last question comes from Depraved Sinner and they say I've got a question I want to know were there any omnivores in the dinosaur group? Well as we started with this video there were dinosaurs that were omnivores but there are very few that we are so sure of that were omnivorous. We know that the dinosaurs like Ornithomimus and its relatives like Gallimimus and Struthiomimus, they were probably omnivores because they have toothless beaks. And so what is the best example to have a look at a toothless beaked animal? Birds. And we know that a lot of birds eat insects and fruit and meat and fish. So we can be pretty sure that the Ornithomimus and other examples of its relatives probably were too. But there's also the Pheasorinosaurs. I've seen that there may be potential that the reason why it had massive claws is to help it dig into insect mounds. And also Truodon is widely thought to be an omnivore. It has some awesome looking teeth. The serrations are just amazing. But it would actually be more handy for this dinosaur to eat things like vegetation insects and nuts and seeds and things like that so Troodon also has the potential of being an omnivore. There were probably lots of other dinosaurs that were omnivores as well but when you're studying something that's long dead it is difficult to be so sure what it ate until you actually find the remains in its stomach cavity so it is difficult but we are getting a better picture of dinosaurs and we do know that a lot would have been omnivores not just simple plant eaters or meat eaters. So those are all the questions that I wanted to answer in this video. I hope you liked it and I want to say thank you to everyone that sent in your questions. I hope the answers were good as well. So thank you for watching. As always I hope to be making new videos. I've got to do some thinking though for new ideas and what to create now at this point in time. But uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for all your questions and I hope to be back soon. I'll see you later.